All right, so here's a problem uh, involving electric fields where we're given uh, three big charges, uh, three big dudes. The physics book is going to refer to these as point charges. The point charges are the big guys. And um, so what we're asked to find for about these three charges is the electric field that the three of them together create at this point at the upper right-hand corner of the rectangle. Um, so before we start the problem, let's just review the equation that we're going to be using. If you're given a big charge, a point charge, and you're asked to find the electric field at a distance r from that charge, um, the equation for doing so is this one, E equals kq over r squared, um, where k is Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9th. Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. Um, and then also, we'll just mention here, uh, notice I have these electric field lines. These arrows are electric field lines, and they're going outward from a positive charge, uh, and that's because we define the direction of the electric field as the direction that a small positive test charge would move when placed in the field. So if we stuck a little positive guy here, he'd move that way. If we stuck a little positive guy right here, he would move that way. It's the direction of the electric field. Okay, so let's erase this and start the problem. All right, so um, a few things before we actually start. Uh, six centimeters, we're going to want to um, use, we're going to just put this down as 0 0.06 meters. Three centimeters is 0 0.03 meters. Um, we're going to need the distance from Q2, I labeled this charge here, Q2, up to the point we're focusing on. Uh, and this distance comes out as 0 0.067, what does this say? 082. Um, so the way I got that, I'm not going to show it, but I just got it from this triangle here. So, you know, this side is 0 0.06 meters. Over here, this is 0 0.03, right, 0 0.03. So you can do Pythagorean theorem and find the hypotenuse. Uh, and the reason why that distance is important is it's the distance from Q2 up to the point we're focusing on. All right, what else? Oh, microcoulombs. We have eight microcoulombs here. We're going to want to punch this in. When we actually use it, it's going to be 8 times 10 to the negative 6. Micro is 10 to the negative 6. This is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 6. 4 times 10 to the negative 6. All right, so the very first thing we do in a problem like this, um, as I said before, these are considered big guys. These are point charges. Uh, and the reason I know that is that the first question wants us to find the electric field created by these three charges. So um, big charges, you know, when we talk about big charges and little charges, the big charge creates the electric field. All right, so let's start with Q1, charge 1. We know that electric fields go out from big positive in all directions. They go out. But at the point that we're focusing at over here, the electric field is going like this. It's going out to the right. Um, and we would label that E1. So here I'm actually going to make this a little nicer. So at this point here, we know the electric field from charge 1 is perfectly to the right. So I'm going to label that E1. One, uh, And again, because the electric field from charge 1 goes out, so at this point that we're focusing on, the electric field from this charge is to the right. All right, going to charge 2. It's also positive. Electric fields go out in all directions for positive charges. So at the point we're focusing on, at the upper right-hand corner, the electric field from charge 2 is going to be going like that. We label that E2. So we'll make this look a little nicer. E2 is going to be pointing 
like that. In fact, you know what? I'm going to make this, well, that's fine. I'll leave it like that. That's good enough for now. So that's E2. Uh, and then lastly, charge 3 is negative. The electric field for big negatives go in. And the reason they go in is because uh, if you stuck a little positive guy here, the little positive guy would go in. Um, the, the direction of the electric field is always the direction that a little negative, that a little positive guy would move. So at the point we're focusing on, the electric field from charge 3 points straight down like that, straight into charge 3. So that's E3. Okay, so now what we're going to do um, is we need to find E1, E2, and E3. So the equation that we're going to use to find each of these uh, the, the equation for finding electric field at a distance from a point charge is kq over r squared. So let's start with E1. Solving for E1, k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. Um, <clears throat> q, let's see, q1 is 8 times 10 to the negative 6. And then the distance between charge 1 and the point we're focusing on is 0. 0, 6 meters. And you got to make sure you square that. E1 comes out as 2 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. All right, E2, it's the same thing. So we're plugging again into kq over r squared. 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared over coulomb squared. Q2 is 2 times 10 to the negative 6. And the distance between charge 2 and the point we're focusing on is 0.067082. Um, definitely don't round that because it's a squared value. Uh, use the full number. Uh, so E2 comes out as 4 times 10 to the 6 newton per coulomb. And then lastly, solving for E3, so now between this point and charge 3, uh, so we go 9 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared over coulomb squared. Charge 3 is 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, absolute value, don't, don't put the negative there. And then the distance between charge 3 and the point we're focusing on is 0 0.03 meters. Square that. And this gives us uh, 4 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. So we now have E1, E2, and E3. Uh, oh, and we're also going to need this angle in here. Um, the reason we need this angle is we're now doing a vector problem. Uh, electric fields are vector. So basically what we have to do is simplify E1, E2, and E3 we need to simplify these three vectors into one vector. So this is no longer a chapter 15, you know, electric field problem. It, it really is just a vector problem, which takes us back to the start of the year. So to solve this vector problem, we're going to need to break E2 into X component, Y component, which means we need this angle, which is the same as this angle. So focusing on this triangle down here, um, we can do, you know, solving for this theta. Theta is tangent inverse opposite, which is 0 0.03, over adjacent, which is 0 0.06. And this gives us an angle of 26.57 degrees, which means that's this up here. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up and make this bigger because the rest of this problem is just vectors. So let's erase. So I'm going to I'm going to redraw what we have. So I'm going to do E1. We got to draw a big E1. Uh, E1 equals uh, two times ten to the seventh. E2. we calculated to be 4 times 10 to the 6. 
and then this angle in here is 26.57 degrees and then E3 points straight down and E3 is uh, 4 times 10 to the 7th. So basically what we have to do is we need to find out, you know, we're, we're now thinking in terms of X and Y. Um, we need to find out what is our total X vector and what is our total Y vector. So I'm going to show the components for E2. Uh, E2, so this, this is in red. So these red vectors here are the components of E2. E1 is no problem because E1 points perfectly X. Alright, so figuring out our total X and our total Y. So we're basically summing the electric fields. Just like we summed forces in first semester, you know, electric fields are just vectors so we can sum them. Uh, Alright, so in the X direction we have E1, which is perfectly X, plus we have the X component of uh, E2, so we'll call that E2X. So E1 is 2 times 10 to the 7th, and then the X component for E2 is going to be cosine of 26.57 times E2, which is 4 times 10 to the 6. So the summation in the X direction gives us uh, 2.3578 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. So this is our total X. This is our total X vector for the X direction. Uh, now we sum in the Y, summing up the electric fields in the Y. Uh, there's only one electric field. No, I'm sorry, there's two. So we have, um, we have the X component of, I'm sorry, we have the Y component of E2, which is going to be positive. So this is sine 26.57 times... 4 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb minus uh, E3, which is 4 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. So this comes out as, comes out as uh, negative 3.8211 times 10 to the 7th uh, newtons per coulomb. So this is the total Y. So we figured out our total X and this right here is our total Y. So I'm going to erase this. I gotta make more room. Or you know what I'll do is I'll shrink it down. Take this all and we'll shrink this down. All right, so from here, uh, what we found out, we, we now have our to these three vectors, E1, E2, E3. Um, Just leave it back there. These simplify down to, uh, in the X direction, our total X electric field is 2.3578 times 10 to the 7th. Um, that's what we calculated up here. And then our total Y electric field points down. It came out negative. Uh, EY simplifies to 3.8211 times 10 to the 7th. Uh, and then what we do from here, the answer we're looking for is the hypotenuse. This is the net electric field. So this is just vectors. All we're doing, uh, once we found E1, E2, E3, it's just simplifying these down to 1. So the net electric field, when you do Pythagorean theorem, comes out as 4.49 times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb. All right, and then we need to find this angle. 
Uh, so you can find that theta just doing inverse tangent. And that'll be, uh, we can just forget, forget the 10 to the 7th here. They're the same, so this will be 3.82 over 2.3578. And this gives us a theta of 58.3 degrees. So the total answer to A is 4.49 uh, times 10 to the 7th newtons per coulomb, uh, 58.3 degrees, and this vector points below the positive x-axis. Okay, so that's uh, part A, which is definitely the most time-consuming part. All right, so now let's go on to part B. All right, so in part B, what we're asked to find, so here's what we found in part A. We figured out that the, uh, the total electric field was uh, 4.49 times 10 to the seventh, and uh, that points below the positive x-axis, and this angle right here is 58.3. And so the question now is if we stick a proton at that point, so I'm going to put this in red, if we stick a proton right here, so this guy right here represents a proton, if we stick a proton there, uh, what will be the force experienced by the proton? Um, so let me erase this 58 degrees. We know it's 58 degrees. All right, so the force experienced by the proton, uh, protons experience a force in the direction of the electric field. So the force on the proton is going to be this way. Uh, and the way we're going to find this force is using um, QE. So that's the equation for finding the force on a little charge in an electric field. So we know the charge of a proton. So now this, we're on part B here. We're solving part B. Um, the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and the electric field is 4.49 times 10 to the seventh newtons per coulomb. So that gives us a force. The proton experiences a force of 7.184 times 10 to the negative 12. Newtons. And then that's going to be at an angle of 58 degrees, just like the electric field. The electric field is, is at an angle of 58 degrees, so the force on the proton is at 58 degrees. And uh, part C is the exact same answer, but if you put an electron in the electric field, the force is going to be opposite the electric field. Negative charges experience a force that's opposite the electric field. Uh, but the charge of an electron is the same as that of a proton, so it gives the exact same force. The force on the electron will be 7.184 times 10 to the negative 12, because it's the, it's the exact same charge as a proton, but the only difference is, is now the force is pointing um, 58 degrees above the negative x-axis. So this is 58 degrees for the proton. It was uh, below the positive x axis. And for the electron, it is above the negative x axis. So to make this clear, like here's x, y. The force on the proton was that way, where that's 58 degrees. The force on the electron is the same force but it's the other way. Uh, electrons experience a force uh, opposite the electric field.